According to an ancient legend, there was once a rebellion by the Winged Ones, but they suffered defeat and fell from grace. Their white wings torn from their bodies, they were cast into the bottom of the darkest abyss. Thus, we shall never return to the glory of old. Greetings friends, that gaming author here, and welcome to the beginning of a brand new Let's Play for Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei, or Kyoku Megami Tensei, I suppose you could say. And we will be playing Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei 1. Akemi Nakajima, a programming genius, invented a demon summoning program. But after gaining physical bodies, the demons Loki and Set attacked the summoner. He was saved by a mysterious transfer student, Yumiko Shirasagi. Nakajima and the magic-wielding Yumiko joined forces and repelled the demons. However, the demons have not surrendered. Lucifer, a once beautiful angel who was cast into hell, is planning to conquer the human world. A demonic palace has appeared in Asuka, where the tomb of the goddess Izanami rests under Shirasagi Mound. The powerful Izanami has been captured by Lucifer, and her chamber sealed within the palace. To save Izanami, defeat the resurrected Loki and Set, and Lucifer himself, Nakajima and Yumiko walk through the palace's entrance. But will they ever be able to return to the surface? And with that, we begin our journey into Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei, the first one. So I know I've already done a stream for this game, but I also thought it was appropriate to do kind of like a, uh, I guess, quote unquote, higher production value Let's Play instead of just doing a casual stream of it. And I thought, you know what, why not pick it back up? Audacity just updated, so I'm using Audacity to record my audio just like I used to. And I'm very excited about getting started with this journey. So, we'll be starting by naming our protagonists, and we're not going to give them any special names, because this is based after the book and the anime, so they already have canon names. So we'll go with Akemi Nakajima, and Yumiko Shirasaki. And then in terms of their stats, so Nakajima, as you can see, he has no MP. So, he is going to be our physical player. So we're going to go and give him points in vitality, strength, maybe a point in speed, a point in intellect, and then I'll put the rest in strength and vitality. And Yumiko, she is our caster. She is also our, our healer. So we're going to want to dump a fair amount of points in intellect. I'll probably give her, like, a few points in vitality. She'll definitely want more speed. We'll put a point in luck, and yeah, the rest of her points can go to intellect. And there's our build for the beginning of the game. So, we are on, or we are in Mekon Village on the 8th floor of Daedalus Tower, and our first task is to defeat the Minotaur. And I totally butchered that quote-unquote copypasta, but you know what? If you know, you know, and if you don't, watch the YouTuber Marsh. I highly recommend it. This is Mycon Village on the 8th floor of the Tower of Daedalus. Yep, he just says what I just said. So, as you can tell, this is a first-person dungeon crawler. We are not going this way quite yet. Also, my controller is not very responsive. I tapped left like three times, whatever. 
This is going to be our entrance to the dungeon itself, but we won't be entering there quite yet. Just to kind of give you a layout of what's going on, pressing A opens up the menu. The comp menu can only be used by Nakajima. Summoning a demon will obviously summon a demon if you have them. Returning a demon will put them back in the PC. Abandoning, abandoning a demon will just completely disregard it, or disregard, uh, discard the demon. So if you're, you know, out of demons and you have one in your party that you don't plan on using, not even for fusion, you can just abandon, abandon it. Reordering is what allows you to switch around the party layout. I'll explain that a little more when we get into combat. Auto mapping opens up a map of the area. So thankfully, unlike the NES version of this game, uh, this game has a built-in map function. So you can build the map as you go instead of needing to draw the map using graph paper, which is good because I have no graph paper. The config menu does exactly what you'd expect. We're going to set battle messages to fast, sort magic off, auto mapping will be set to fixed so that way it will always be pointing north and the sound will always be stereo because stereo just sounds good. And then lastly we have the devil analyzer. Once we've encountered enemies this will give us the stats and abilities of enemies we've encountered so that in the future we may know what, we ha what they have and if we deem them worthy of being summoned to our party we can go ahead and use that as a point of reference to figure out what they have. Now magic, only Yumiko can use magic. The spell Mapara will cast a well, a spell that will give you a little mini map on the bottom right so you can see your surroundings. It's very useful when you're in a dark room, but in this version of the game it's not really necessary. The item menu, we don't have any items, but this is where you can equip stuff and you can examine items to see what they do. Or use items. And then status will take you to the status page. Once we have demons in our party this is where we'll see their status as well. And as you can see it shows what the characters look like. Pressing left will indicate what equipment or treasure they have. Pressing right also shows equipment and then it just kind of cycles. Press R and go to Yumiko. Now she has magic and it will show us a list of her spells. Very useful. So right now we have nothing. We're going to want to fix that soon. Also, this will probably be the most tutorial-esque part of this Let's Play, because quite frankly, after this first dungeon, it's going to be a blind playthrough. So just prepare yourselves for that. <laughs> there are some demons in this palace that might join you. Have you tried talking to them? Eh, I will eventually. And we'll just go in here to mark it off on the map, but yeah, everyone seems healthy. So once we get into battle and we start getting damaged and stuff like that, we're going to want to go to him and he is going to heal us for a fee. And welcome to the Cathedral of Shadows where demons gather. So once we've received demons and we have them in the party, we can go ahead and start fusing them together here. Now right now we only have access to double fusion, but later there will be a triple fusion option where you can fuse three demons to form a particularly powerful one. Now I don't remember the exact specifics of Demon Fusion, but I think Demon Race is what really uh, counts when it comes to going into Demon Fusion. So just a little something to keep in mind. If you're heading down, you need equipment. They sell weapons and armor here. Also that dude looks like a zombie. <laughs> he's not, like he looks like he's definitely seen better days. I hear demons become tame on Dark Nights. That is an important tutorial. You see the moon up there on the upper left hand corner that says 7-8 moon? That indicates moon phases. So in early Shin Megami Tensei, up to Nocturne I believe, and to an extent Shin Megami Tensei 4, moon phases were important. They indicate demon behavior. If a moon is full, demons will not be willing to negotiate with you and they will attack. And in this game, I believe that they get stronger on a full moon and are a lot more hostile. Whereas on a new moon, they are much calmer and much more likely to join your party if you want to negotiate with them. Negotiation in this game works a little differently, so like other Shin Megami Tensei games, uh, de only demons of certain races will join you through negotiation, so just an important thing to keep in mind. Alright, let's go in and grab this treasure, get 500 Maka. 
and I want to start off by buying weapons, so that way we can wipe out enemies nice and quickly. Ah, uh, welcome. Ask me anything about items. Or weapons, I guess. <laughs> so let's see. We're gonna want some cheap weapons so we can also have good defense. So I think we're gonna start off with a couple jackknives. And eventually, we'll be able to get better weapons, of course. But right now, it's important to just start off with the basics. And that is all for me. Come back soon. Now let's head into the armor shop, make sure we get ourselves some defense. I have everything from armor to shields. This is an authentic armor shop. Let's do business. Oh yeah, we absolutely will. Let's see now. So a combat suit can be equipped on both of them. That is good to know. And I should have enough money to buy two of those. And if worst comes to worst, I mean, we'll die, we'll come back. This game is a lot of trial and error, as you will all figure out very quickly. So it's just something to get used to. Time again. And this room. I am the village elder. I can record your journey here. So he will save our game for us. Now, normally I'm averse to saving games, you know, in the middle of an active recording. But this is a very brutal game, and I do not, I do not plan on using save states. So it will be best to go ahead and just save. I will have no regrets over this. <laughs> we are going to deal with it. And, oh, come on, I'm pressing back. Controller disconnect. Okay, I just had to unplug it and replug it back in. My goodness. Okay, and that's the dude who's like, yeah, you're on Micon Village. Hey, kid! The demon's den is past this point. I won't stop you, but be careful. Oh, yeah, we will. Well, to an extent. <laughs> And here we are, the Tower of Daedalus. Now, this dungeon is very dangerous, and you guys will very quickly find that out. You can fuse demons at the Cathedral of Shadows. You should make powerful demons if you're heading into the palace. We will absolutely keep that in mind, I assure you. So right now, I just kind of want to explore, show you guys around. Something's written on the wall. Demons are terrifying in the moonlight. Yeah, we're well aware. Ah, and our first fight against Yoma Hecate. Now, I'm pretty sure we can't actually negotiate with any demons yet. We're too low leveled. Normally, I like to start talks around level 4. And if you try to talk to a demon too early, they're going to be like, Well, pff, you're too weak. I'm not going to join your freaking party. So, we're just going to go ahead and jump right on in and get this party started. Okay, we already killed one, that's good. And they healed needlessly, but that's fine. <laughs> so, once we reach a certain point, we'll eventually be able to just auto-battle and be fine. But right now, my main worry is survival. And you will find out survival is very difficult in this game, especially when you start off with such incredibly low stats. And we've already got a level up, so that is pretty fantastic. So I believe Vitality actually does increase uh, defense as well. So I put a point in Vitality and then a point in the Strength. And did they actually gain two level ups? That's quite impressive, actually. Yumiko learned a new spell. Let's go ahead and check out her status real quick. She learned two new spells. Dia, as you guys may have seen during that fight with Hecate, will automatically heal you. Well, not automatically, but it's a heal spell. It's basically like Cure 1 in Final Fantasy or something like that. Posumity, I believe, removes petrification. I could be wrong about that. I think there's a way to check what her spells can do. Uh, let me see. I don't think so. I could have sworn there was a way to do that. Okay, yeah. Pressing the button doesn't do anything. 
Well, we survived to level 3. That's an accomplishment in itself. And then we've got Foul Green Slime. So this is a race of demon we cannot negotiate with. So again, we are just going to jump right into the uh, right into the fray and wipe them out nice and quickly. Doesn't help if we frequently miss. That will happen a lot, especially in the early game. So you just kind of get used to that. But we are making progress, and that's ultimately what matters. All right. Not a bad start. And now normally I don't go through this door until I feel I'm properly ready and I've done a bit of grinding. And yeah, another foul demon, so we cannot negotiate with this one. But normally I do like to grind a little bit before really making progress, because in some of these rooms there are fixed encounters, which can be quite dangerous if you're not prepared. But I think we're going to be a little reckless and just try our best. Negotiation is key when recruiting demons. That it is. And now I believe in both of these rooms there is a fixed encounter, so I won't go there. <laughs> and instead, we're not going to go downstairs quite yet, but I just want to make sure it's marked on our map. So you saw in the comp menu, we can open up the map by pressing auto mapping, right? Well, that's not the only way. There is a shortcut. You just press the L button, it'll show you what you've explored so far, and where you have yet to explore. And then if you press L again, it will show you your relative location and the grand scheme of things. As you can see, we are quite high up in Daedalus Tower. We've still got a ways to go. You can scroll to the right and see more of where we're supposed to go, but I'd rather not spoil the surprise, so to say. <laughs> so. We're just going to hold off on that for a little bit. And you know what? If we die... We die... I think we go for these fixed encounters. So, Jiren Gnomes. Gnomes we can negotiate with eventually. They are decent allies for the beginning of the game. But as things stand, we are quite low leveled and we cannot actually get them in the party yet. They are very dangerous though. This is why I put a point in intellect for Nakajima at the beginning, because they like to cast Zan, which can attack multiple times and deal a lot of damage. We're going to give this fight a try and just see how it goes. Okay, starting off with decent damage and just a regular physical attack, that's okay. Let's see how turn two turns out. Okay, good. If they ever attack in groups of, like... Oh yeah, so that message means that occasionally in these rooms with fixed encounters, you'll be able to find an item, and that can be useful. But if they attack in groups of, like, two or more, they can get very deadly. And at that point, I usually recommend running. That is why the luck stat is important. Luck actually determines things like your critical hit rate and your rate at running, and I think it helps with the demon negotiation. I could be wrong, though. Alright, Kaiju Basmu. And now I don't believe we can negotiate with uh, Kaiju demons either, but I could be wrong about that. I feel like I've negotiated with these guys before. Oh, I was gonna say after that turn we're gonna have to heal Yumiko, but I guess we didn't really have to. Not bad. They're holding their own pretty decently well. Let's see, how much longer do we have to the next level up? As of now, since they're both... Uh, oh, only two experience. Okay, my controller stopped working again for a second. Okay, so instead of waiting for a random encounter to happen, I'm just gonna go right back in. And since this is a fixed encounter room, this enemy will always spawn. This is useful knowledge for later on, when we're going to need to start grinding a lot more. The uh, There are fixed rooms further in the dungeon, where demons provide a lot more XP. And that's really helpful to know. And this guy already gives a ton of XP, so that's just amazing. I'm going to go ahead and pump a point to strength, give her a point in intelligence. 
And let's go ahead and see what that new uh, spell is for Yumiko. So you may notice I pulled up the status screen pretty quickly there. The way you do that is by pressing the X button. So kind of like, you know, in a regular RPG. Patra. Now Patra removes some status ailment. I think in Persona it removes like all status ailments or something along those lines. I could be wrong though, but... In this game, it definitely doesn't do that. And this guy is weak sauce, we're gonna be fine. Unless both of us miss. <laughs> All right, let's just go ahead and take this guy out nice and quickly. And now something to note about this game. The more you grind and the more you level up, the less XP you will start getting from enemies. So just Bear that in mind as you proceed, because eventually it's going to get a lot harder to actually get demons to join your party. So yeah, just be careful about that. Like, be a little wary. And now I'm going to buy a better weapon for Nakajima. Let's see. So we have a balancing act here we can have. We can either attack twice, dealing only one or two damage, or, or dealing only two damage, or we can attack once, reliably dealing 4 damage. Since we have the money for it, I am going to go ahead and buy him a dagger. Let's go to status, go to Nakajima's page, equip that dagger, and we're going to go ahead and sell his jackknife. There we go. And with that, let's stop in and speak with the Village Elder. We will go ahead and save the game real quick. And there we have it! That will be our first foray into Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei. I am going to do some off-camera grinding, get the party up a fair amount, and uh... Now, I'll save Demon Negotiation for our next episode, so you guys can see how it's done. Anyway, next time on Let's Play Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei 1, we're going to dive further into Daedalus Tower and start descending a little further, see what we can find, and figure out exactly what it is we're supposed to do here in order to find Izanami. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day!